Hi friends, welcome to another packet tracer activity configuring a rotor on a stick interwheel and rotting. Yes, here we can see uh, the activities, uh, the objectives, what we are going to do in this uh, packet tracer. Uh, test connectivity without interwheel and routing. Add VLANs to a switch. Configure sub interfaces. Test connectivity with the interwheel and routing. We will come to part 1, test connectivity without interwheel and routing. So in that step 1, ping between PC1 and PC3. Here we can see PC1 and PC3. So wait for switch convergence or click fast forward time a few times. When the link lights are green for PC1 and PC3, yes it is already in green, uh, ping between PC1 and PC3. Because the two PCs are on separate networks and R1 is not configured, the ping fails. Okay, we will ping from PC1 to PC3 and as they mentioned here the ping fails, we will check that. Before going to ping, we will check the IP address of PC3. So here we can see the IP address of PC3, I am going to copy that. We will come to PC1 and we will ping to PC3 ping and the IP address of PC3 we are waiting for the replay so as they told it should fail we can see it, uh, it's coming request timed out we will wait uh, a moment yeah request timed out Okay, here we can see that uh, pink uh, failed, 100% uh, loss. As they told, obviously these two PCs, I mean PC1 and PC3 will not uh, ping each other. Uh, you can see these two PCs are in different subnets. Here we can see it is in 10.0, here we can see it is in 30.0. Now we will go to uh, step 2. Uh, switch to simulation mode to monitor pings. Switch to simulation mode by clicking the simulation tab or pressing shift plus S. Click capture or forward to see the steps the ping takes between PC1 and PC3. And notice how the ping never leaves PC1. What process failed and to why? Okay, we will come to simulation and we will cross check it. Now we will go to simulation mode. Yes, here it is. And we will go again to PC1, command prompt, and uh, here we are going to keep, we are going to give the ping again uh, to PC3, and we will check it what happens. Here we can see, yes. So, to packet generated, we will see what it is. Yeah, this is ARP. Okay, we will give a capture or forward. Yes, we can see a RP uh, come to yes one. Okay, we will give again capture or forward. We can see it goes to PC three. Oh, chose cross. We'll give again capture and forward. Yes, so we are not getting the. Uh, MAC address of PC3 back to PC1. So obviously uh, this PC1 cannot communicate with PC3. So we'll give a caption and forward again here so that we can see the first request timed out. Again it is sending. So this PC1 uh, still didn't get the MAC address of PC3. So we get the next request timed out here. Okay, we'll give again capture and forward. Yes, we can the third one here. Okay, and the last one here. Yes. So, uh, why it is failed? The ARP process failed because the ARP request is not reached to PC3. Here we can see PC1 and PC3 are not in the same network. So PC1 never gets the MAC address of PC3. So without a MAC address, 
PC1 cannot create an ICMP echo request. That's why it failed. Now we will go to part 2. Add VLANs to a switch. Uh, step 1. Create VLANs on S1. Okay. Return to real time mode and create VLAN 10 and VLAN 30 on S1. Right, we will come to real time mode and now we will create this VLAN 10 and VLAN 30 uh, on this uh, S1. Okay, coming to S1, enable configure terminal. Here we are going to create VLAN 10 and VLAN 30. Yes. Now we will come to uh, step 2 assign VLANs to ports. Configure interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 6 and fast Ethernet 0 slash 11 as access ports and assign VLANs. Assign PC1 to VLAN 10 and PC3 to VLAN 30. Okay, we will do this uh, now on uh, S1. Before uh, going to the uh, configuration VLAN 2 ports, uh, here we can see uh, this PC1 is connected to uh, fast Ethernet 0 slash 11 and PC3 is connected to fast Ethernet 0 slash 6. Okay, we will come to the configuration part. We will exit. Here we are going to the interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 11. And here we are going to give switch port mode as access. And here we are going to give switch port access VLAN 10. Now we will go to the interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 6 and we will give the mode switch port mode access and we will give a switch port access VLAN 30. Next we will issue the show VLAN brief command to verify VLAN configuration. So we have to give this a show VLAN brief command and we can see the uh, result here. Oops, we'll come to PC, sorry, switch S1 yes and we'll go to privileged exit mode. Here we are going to give show, show VLAN brief, right. Yes, here we can see uh, two VLAN what we created, VLAN 10 and VLAN 30 and we can see the interface as a fast Ethernet 0 slash 11. Uh, it is in VLAN 10 and 0 slash 6 is in uh, VLAN 30. Now we will come to uh, step 3. Uh, from PC1, uh, ping to PC3, the pings should still fail. Uh, why were the pings unsuccessful? Obviously, it will uh, fail. Uh, anyway, we will uh, test this connectivity from uh, PC1 to PC3. Coming to PC1, here we are going to ping to PC3. Yes, we can uh, see it should fail. Yes, so request timed out. We will get the remaining three more requests timed out. Sure, uh, here you can see it is unsuccessful because each VLAN is a separate network and requires a router or a layer 3 switch to provide communication between these two entity devices. Now we will go to part 3. Configure sub interfaces. In that step 1, configure sub interfaces on R1 using the 802. Point one Q encapsulation. Create the sub interface uh, uh, gigabit uh, uh, Ethernet 0 slash 0 dot 10. Set the encapsulation type to 802.1Q and assign VLAN 10 to the interface. Refer to the addressing table and assign the correct IP address to the sub interface. And also we have to repeat for the G0 slash 0 dot 30 sub interface. Okay, we will do this configuration on this uh, router R1. Now we will come to R1, CLI mode here, enable configure terminal, here we are going to the interface gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 dot 10, VLAN 10, so sub interface, here we are going to give the encapsulation as uh, dot 1Q and here we have to specify the VLAN ID that is uh, 10. And now we will give the IP address that is 172.17.10.1 and we have to specify the subnet mask that is 255.255.255.0. .255 .255 .0. 
So here we can see the IP address. Yes, here it is. And for the VLAN 30, we have to give 30.1. Right, we will come back again here. We will go to the interface gigabit uh, ethernet 0 slash 0 dot 30. Now we have to give the <coughs> sorry uh, encapsulation dot 1q then the VLAN ID that is uh, 30. Now we have to give its IP address. So that is 172.17. This is the VLAN 30. They are given 30.1. And to submit mask 255.255.255.0. Now we will exit and we will go to the interface uh, gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 and we will give no shot command. Yes. Now we will come to uh, step 2. Uh, verify configuration. Uh, use the show IP interface brief command to verify sub interface configuration. Both sub interfaces are down. Okay, uh, actually, we given the uh, no shut command, so uh, the interface will be up now. Uh, sub interfaces are virtual interfaces that are associated with a physical interface. Therefore, in order to enable sub interfaces, you must enable the physical interface that they are associated with. Yes, already we, uh, we have done that. Here we can see we come to the actual physical interface that is gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 and we given the no shut command uh, so that the sub interfaces uh, that is 0 0.10 and 0 0.30 uh, changed its state to up. Enable the G0 slash 0 interface. Uh, verify that the sub interfaces are now active. Yes, our interfaces are active now. Also, we will verify uh, show IP interface brief. Yes, here we can see uh, the sub interfaces uh, 0.10 and 0 0.30 with its IP address. And we can see the status uh, is up. Now we will go to uh, part 4. Test connectivity with the inter VLAN routing. Uh, step 1 ping between PC1 and PC3. From PC1 uh, ping PC3, the pings should still fail. Okay, uh, so again we are going to ping from PC1 to PC3. And uh, still uh, this uh, ping fail. because we have to uh, something called we have to enable something called trunking uh, we will uh, configure that now yes it's failed now we will come to uh, step 2 uh, enable trunking on s1 issue the show vlan command what vlan is uh, g0/1 assigned to okay we will come to s1 enable show vlan brief we can give okay we have to see g0 slash 1 yes here we can see uh, gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 is in uh, default to vlan that is 1 vlan 1 next is uh, because the router was configured with multiple sub interfaces assigned to different vlans the switch port connecting to the router must be configured as a trunk. Right. Enable trunking on interface uh, gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1. Okay. We will come to S1. Now we will go to configure terminal. We have to go to the interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1. And we have to change its switch port mode to uh, trunk. Switch port mode trunk. Yes. Next is uh, how can you determine that the interface is a trunk port using the show VLAN command? Okay, we given uh, this uh, enable trunk on uh, gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1. Uh, we will come to S1 and we will try that. Okay, we will give show VLAN brief and uh, we will uh, search for this interface 
uh, we can see that gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 is not available here if it's not listed here obviously it will be a trunk port next is uh, issue the show interface trunk command to verify the interface is configured as a trunk okay coming to yes one here we'll give show interface a trunk yes here we can see gigabit ethernet zero slash uh, one is configured as a trunk now we are going to uh, step three yeah switch to simulation mode to monitor pings switch to simulation mode by clicking the simulation tab or pressing uh, shift plus yes then we have to click a capture or forward to see the steps the ping takes between pc1 and pc3 okay we will come to simulation mode and we will give ping from pc1 to pc3 and we will monitor the pings now we will come to a simulation mode then coming to pc1 desktop command prompt here we are going to give a ping to pc3 the ip address of pc3 yes now here we can see two packets generated one is icmp and another one is uh, arp we will check it that yes we can see icmp and arp so uh, this arp will go to this router and it will get the uh, mac address of uh, this uh, interface uh, gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 so that icmp uh, will go through uh, router because we can see pc1 and pc3 they are in a different subnet okay we will uh, capture and forward it okay arp now s1 give capture and forward it goes to router yes arp yes here we can see okay yes, it is coming back yes we can see the first uh, icmp is uh, happening here Here we can see the ARP sending to PC3. Okay. Right. It is getting the information from a PC3. We got the first uh, request timed out. Now we will see what happens. Is it ICMP? Yes, ICMP. It goes to PC3. We came back to switch and we must get the replay yes we'll give again capture and forward okay it goes to router we get we will get the replay right so the fourth one yes here we can see acknowledgement back to the switch and back to pc1 yes here we can see we got the replay here we can see here you should see a rp requests and replies between s1 and r1 yes we have seen that then a rp requests and replies between r1 and s3 then pc1 can encapsulate an icmp echo request with the proper data link layer information and r1 will route the request to pc3 yes we have seen this the given a note after the ARP process finishes, you may need to click reset simulation to see the ICMP process complete. Anyway, we have seen and successfully we ping from PC1 to PC3 using a simulation itself. Well, great job. Uh, we have seen the packet tracer activity, configuring router on a stick inter VLAN routing. Friends, if you got any doubt, uh, you can comment below. Also, if you like my videos, give a thumb. Also, if you like to get my future video information in your Gmail, you can subscribe my channel right now. Thank you.